Yes, hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is the Clarets Daily News here on Turfcast. Now, of course, on yesterday's show, we reported that the journalists were saying that Burnley are closing in on appointing Scott Parker. That was the actual term that was used by Alan Nixon, that we are closing in. In Well, today the news is that we are hoping to have him appointed by the end of the week. Now, I'm recording this Thursday morning for you all. This is obviously Thursday's show. So if we are hoping to get it done by the end of the week, it doesn't leave too much time, does it really? So I guess we'll see on, on this one. But this one comes from Belgian journalist Sasha Tavalera. And he says, Burnley FC now working to finalise Scott Parker's arrival at Turf Moor, being told talks are advancing well and that he's in pole position to get the job. Obviously, we knew that bit anyway, really. Both parties hope to complete the deal before the weekend, he actually says. Now, again, he's Belgium. He probably just means end of the week because the way he's put week dash end on that to me suggests there's something lost in translation there. I saw it as by the end of the week. But anyway, so yeah, interesting. I did see some people say that it doesn't really add much, does that post? And he could just be putting a blanket over the story. And it, I, up until the last sentence, it does kind of look like that. But nobody else has said that um, we're hoping to get the deal done by the end of the week. So I guess we'll wait, on see, uh, wait, wait and see on this one. But... Sasha is saying that uh, he's in poor position, which we already knew. Um, he's also saying that we are working hard to finalise the arrival at Turf Moor, Scott Parker's arrival. Again, with that, we already knew there's nothing much being added there. But again, at the end, like I said, for me, that bit that says we're hoping to get it done by the weekend is new. But again, if he could just be throwing a blanket over it because obviously that's what a lot of these celebrity type journalists do where they just, just want to keep their interactions up and show that they're across all the stories but that's the only one that suggested that we will be looking to get it done by the end of the week but like I said it is now currently Thursday um, which means it's Friday tomorrow so we'll be doing the final Claret's Daily News show of the week tomorrow so hopefully we can get something on and in place before then but I'm not going to be holding my breath personally I would hope that maybe at the start of next week uh, potentially at the weekend, I'm not sure. I get, I get, I guess it's just anyone's guess at the minute. But Sasha's the only one that's saying we want to get it done by the end of the week. It's not been picked up by any of the local lads just yet, but I'm sure when something happens, it will do. Now it's been no secret that Craig Bellamy is obviously interested in the Burnley job and has even been interviewed and instilled as as the bookies' favourite on more than one occasion. I think to be honest with you, so a lot of the reports were surrounding Bellamy that if he didn't get the manager's job, he would then leave Burnley to seek a first sort of like head coach role, manager's role somewhere else. But the BBC are now reporting that that's not true. They are saying that Craig Bellamy is likely to stay at the club alongside Parker and obviously the first team assistant coach, Henrik Jensen, and obviously Mike Jackson as well. He's set to stay at the club as well. We're reporting on that. A couple of weeks ago, I can't remember who brought that one, but it was on one of the shows a couple of weeks ago. Well, the stories are now that even if Craig Bellamy doesn't get the manager's job, and obviously it's not looking like he will, it's looking like Scott Parker will be the manager, that he is set to stay as assistant. Um, and, and, you know, it's interesting because a lot of the comments that I, I put this, because I only put this story on Facebook actually yesterday, but a lot of the comments were, so two assistant managers then, how's that going to work? Or too many cooks spoil the broth and, you know, that sort of stuff. When Henrik was appointed, I sat here and spoke about how it was interesting on the job title that they gave Henrik Jensen. I think the exact title was, I'll just quickly get it up on my screen now, Henrik Jensen as a first team assistant coach. Now, I said that was interesting, didn't I? Because I said that potentially leaves uh, assistant head coach because he's they made a point of calling him first team assistant coach instead of assistant head coach. So I did say that potentially that leaves space for somebody to be an assistant head coach. And I think I said at the time, it, it, it gives the manager a chance to bring somebody in. Well, again, it turns out that, well, if the BBC report is correct, obviously it turns out that that won't be the case and it will probably be Craig Bellamy. But what's interesting with this one is that Craig Bellamy is still interested in the Wales job. And I believe I've spoken to somebody who says he's had an interview for the Wales job. So if he gets offered the Wales job, he's probably going to take that right. So 
It's not 100% certain to be happening that Craig Bellamy will be staying, but the BBC, as I've said, are reporting that it is likely. The, that's the words they use. He didn't say definitely will be, I guess, they never do, though, do they, these reports, just to cover their own backs. But the actual sentence or couple of paragraphs that they said was, Craig Bellamy was named acting head coach in May following the departure of Vincent Company to Bayern Munich. Should Parker be appointed, the ex-Wales international Bellamy is likely to stay at the club in a coaching capacity. In fact, I was wrong earlier. They don't say as assistant, but they say in a coaching capacity, along with new assistant Henrik Jensen, coach Mike Jackson and set piece coach Elliot Ty Babo. I, I won't mention uh, the set piece coach and all the negative stuff surrounding him last season, but the BBC have actually called Henrik Jensen the assistant, which again, are going back to what the club actually painted him as at the time that I'm not sure that's necessarily true he is the first team assistant coach and not the assistant head coach or the assistant manager that's not his job title the BBC have got that bit wrong so it's interesting to see what will happen with Bellamy I suspect if he gets offered the Wales job he takes the Wales job and then he leaves the club obviously but we'll see I don't think he's going to get the Wales job. I would be surprised if he got the Wales job unless he's ridiculously good at interviews. But again, I guess with this one, it's a wait and see. But the BBC are reporting that he's likely to stay at the club in a coaching capacity. And as I said around two weeks ago when Jensen was appointed, that's interesting because his actual job title is first team assistant coach and not assistant head coach. So that could leave room for Bellamy to be assistant head coach. I guess we'll have to wait and see again. Elsewhere, there's been some good comments from Maxime Esteve. Now, I'm probably being, potentially being a little bit naive on this one, but his, his, his sports club website, obviously they've asked to speak to him. That's how this sort of thing works. And he's said some comments that don't necessarily look like a guy who's thinking about leaving. Now, again, obviously, we know with this current model, if an offer comes in at the right price, the club will tell him that he's off rather than him wanting to be off. But some of the comments that he said recently don't make it look like he wants to leave. And I genuinely don't think he does, if I'm being honest with it. Again, call me naive, but I genuinely don't think he does. Now, to be fair, these quotes were on the club website, were put on the club website about two days ago. And I, I didn't notice it, because I'll be honest with you, I don't really go on the club website too much. I tend to, to digest my news through, through social media. Um, but he did say... Now the fixtures are out, it's exciting. I'm really looking forward to starting again and getting back to turf more soon and seeing the fans. Now there's a lot more to it than that in the actual article, but I noticed it because the club put something out on social media and then obviously I went onto the website via the link that they shared and then saw that it's seen a lot more. But it's that bit, it's the, the bit where he says he's looking forward to starting again and getting back to turf more soon. That doesn't, to me, sound like a guy who wants to leave. And I genuinely believe he will be one of, if not the best defenders in the championship next season. And if we have Jordan Bayer as well, it's it's one of them too, because they're both class. Um, but the reports are that Bayer will miss the start of the season alongside Ekdal and alongside Al Dakil. Somebody was arguing that point with me on Twitter a couple of days ago, saying that, well, they're in training, so they can't be too injured. But I haven't genuinely seen any pictures of them in training yet. And if you know, if, if you have, feel free to send them because I've obviously missed them. There's been some pictures of them walking into the building, but they're probably walking into the building, then turning left and going straight to the physio room. The physio room may be right. I don't know which way it is. I've never been to Barnfield. Um, remember, everything you see on Turfcast, not everything you see on Turfcast, sorry, is true. But yeah, it's going to be interesting. I would love to see Esteve stay. I think he wants to stay. And I do think he will be one of the top defenders in the championship next season if he stays. But yeah, them quotes to me make it sound like he doesn't want to leave. And that is half the battle. But as I've said, the club could just turn around and be like, right, off you pop. We've had a nice bid and we want you to leave. Um, elsewhere, there's I saw a report from Football Insider. Hence why I haven't tweeted it or hence why I haven't given it its own section in this show. Because Football Insider's, I'm certain it's just a load of made-up nonsense. Um, but they believe that we are looking at Edgardo Faina. No idea. Uh, apparently he's um, playing at Copa America at the minute. Um, but again, Football Insider. So I wouldn't even take it with a pinch of salt. I'd just immediately dismiss it. Um, and also, 
Um, a couple of games have been moved for TV. Obviously, we're already aware that the Luton game had been moved and was on TV, as is every single championship game over the opening weekend. They are every single one of them is on TV, but obviously ours got moved to the Monday night because of the TV. Um, but obviously the Blackburn game was always going to be on TV. I thought this would be moved to Sunday, and it's my dad's birthday on the 31st, so shout out dad. I know he listens and watches these. Um, so he was hoping that it would get moved in case it ruined his birthday, that, that his comments, not mine. Um, but uh, it's still going to be on Saturday, the 31st of August, and we will play them now at 12.30pm. Even if that wasn't selected for Sky, that would have been moved anyway on police advice, right? So we all expected that one to be moved, but like I said, I, I presumed it would be Sunday. But no, it's Saturday, the 31st of August at 12.30. And the Leeds away game, Saturday, the 14th of September, that has also been moved to 12.30, and it stays on Saturday. Blackburn game's live on Sky Sports Football. Lee's game is live on Sky Sports Plus. So a couple of games moved there. Bit disappointed they've only selected two, but at the same time, glad about it because I don't particularly like the games being moved too much. But at least these have been moved quite early so we can we can make plans and, and stuff like that. But yeah, I've noticed that Luton are on TV five times on the opening TV packages. I mean... Luton, really? Um, Leeds are probably on TV every single week. I haven't seen out, out many Leeds. Obviously, we're only on TV three times. So, again, not overly bothered. It um, helps us plan and stuff. I prefer the Saturday 3 o'clock game uh, kickoffs more than anything else. There's some weird kickoff times in the Championship this season. There's going to be a Thursday night block. So, I'm hoping we don't really get moved too much for TV, especially for that one, because Thursday nights will be an absolute ball ache, even when we're at home. It's going to be a ball ache to even get to home games. Um, on Thursday nights and I only live at the opposite side of Burnley so for those of you that don't live in Burnley and, and have a season ticket I genuinely do feel for you but any away games moved to Thursday night will be an absolute ball we're, we're already playing Plymouth away on a Wednesday night I think it is and that's just going to be ridiculous to get to for those of us that want to I say those of us that want to I've never been I wanted to go this season I'm not sure I will on a Wednesday night but anyway that's a different debate that's it though from me that's pretty much everything that's out there at the minute. So yeah, Parker set to be appointed by the end of the week, according to Sasha Tavalieri, Craig Bellamy, set to stay on at Turf Moor in some form of coaching capacity, according to BBC Sport and Maxime Esteve. This came out a few days ago, so apologies for missing that one. But his comments don't make it sound like a player that wants to leave Burnley Football Club. But as usual, let me know in the comments below what you thought of every single thing that we spoke about today. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and of course, like the video please. And we'll be back tomorrow.